Hey, welcome back, everybody. Of course, this is Dr. Keith McNally, and this is another exciting uh, vlog on project-based learning. And so I'm excited to say that sometime in the near future, I am going to be interviewed, and the Q&A session is going to focus on experiential learning. And so you know me. I've been talking about PBL for some time now, and I just needed to do a little bit of uh, research to find out what the really core difference is between what is being coined as experiential learning and what K-12 systems and even colleges and universities are talking about as PBL or project-based learning. And it's not surprising to find out that there are really no differences. So it's really a matter of philosophy and thought so that even if I'm speaking against somebody else's philosophy or uh, train of thought in terms of this is experiential learning and this is PBL and this is whatever and this is whatever. I'm here to say there's some really core elements that are consistent across these hands-on learning experiences. So it really doesn't matter if you are focused as a STEM educator to get your students hands-on, hands-on the keyboard, building robots, um, penetration testing, whatever it is, or if you are teaching English and or history or and or science and or anything else, really it's getting students involved in the learning process. So yes, you're going to have a unit, you've got content that needs to be delivered, and you are familiar with just providing students with the questions that they you think they should be asking and the answers to those questions because they've already been predetermined no well yeah that's what you're about to do but no that's not what the pbl or the experiential learning uh, methodology philosophy paradigm whatever word you want to call it that's not how it works and so why is project-based learning? Why is experiential learning? Why is the backbone of it so important? Because we want to focus on six core ingredients. And so let me talk about what those are. First, critical and analytical thinking. We want them, we want our students to become critical thinkers. Now, of course, we I'm not going to go in to the definition of what being a critical thinker is right now, um, the definition of that and the full explanation of how that's going to be integrated into your into your coursework uh, will take several will take several sessions. So know up front that we want to design the unit, we want to design the learning experience so that students learn to be critical and analytical thinkers. So they need to be able to ask questions and find answers. Uh, so with that being as it is, that's really the second core element. We want them to know and learn and how to ask questions. So it's not just about the teacher giving them the questions that they need to find answers to. They need to learn how to ask questions themselves that are specific to the learning experience, the learning activity. And then they need to learn how to find the answers to those questions. So first, critical and analytical thinking. Second, asking and answering questions. Number three, we need to hold students accountable and we need to teach them, especially if they're working in groups or teams, how to hold themselves accountable, how to hold others accountable. Now, that can be easier said than done. And there are methods to do that, but we want them to take ownership of their learning. It's not just about here, here's something to build, here, follow these instructions, get it done. No, 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 we're walking away from that. We're gonna change the way we think and we're gonna change the way we educate. We wanna empower uh, our, our learners, whatever their age, wherever they are, to think critically, to ask and answer questions, hold themselves accountable, and take ownership of their learning. Four, we also, also want to engage students um, socially, emotionally, collaboratively. 
we want to get the whole student, the holistic element of the student involved in the learning experience. So learning just doesn't take place in the brain, okay? So it's not just about data dumping the information and expecting students to be able to apply it and use it. We want them to become, again, going back to the ownership of that material, we want them to become involved, engaged, excited. We want them to solve problems. We want them to understand how people are impacted by situations, problems, data, material, so that as they become uh, lifelong learners, as what I preach, we want them to feel that ownership. We want them to feel uh, that participative, if that's a word, that collaboration with others to solve the problems. And so that's all part of the learning experience. Uh, we also expect them to uh, get things done on a trial and error basis. So this is number five. Um, it's going to take experimentation and not just in terms of like a science experiment. Uh, even if you were to engage them in a writing exercise, uh, writing just doesn't occur as a one-time event. Uh, there's a process to writing. Uh, sometimes, you know, my daughter wants to get it right the first time, and I tell her, you're not going to get it right the first time. Uh, first, we just need to get thoughts down on paper. Again, asking questions and finding answers to those questions. Um, brainstorm some answers. Then we talk about the writing itself, you know, putting those ideas in the sentences and formatting those sentences in the paragraphs, organizing that structure, uh, proofreading, editing, drafting. Again, you get the idea. So it doesn't matter if it's a narrative or if it's a science project or a technology project. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's going to be lots of trial and error. There's going to be testing and retesting and thinking and rethinking. And so that's really key. And then number six is at the end of the day, when this is all over, uh, students should be able to deliver and proudly deliver a product. So we talk about whether it's a multimedia um, presentation or a display of some sort or a, a robot or whatever it is, a book, a podcast, it doesn't matter. There's going to be a deliverable at the end. And it's not necessarily a predetermined deliverable, uh, meaning that you're expecting students to build a replica of XYZ. Um, it, can, it could and should be something of their creativity and their design. So there's lots of things to think about in terms of experiential learning, regardless if it's PBL or some other phraseology. Um, there are some core components. And so hopefully this was a good, good um, review for you. And if you're new to experiential learning or PBL, uh, know that there's a lot here. So that's why I say it's, it's a philosophy. It's a paradigm shift. It is a, um, it's a community of thought. So go with that. And of course, I'll see you next time. Take care.